So in this video, I'm going to show you how to color metal using liver of sulfur. This is the liver of sulfur uh, concentrated solution that I'll be mixing with water. Um, you'll need a plastic utensil, a fork, or um, tweezers one bowl of water in a plastic container, and then another of water mixed with baking soda. And I'll explain what that's for in a second. So uh, I have a few different samples of metal here, some with texture, some without, and then one with Sharpie drawn onto it, just to show you the differences of um, liver of sulfur on the metal as well as the technique. So you want a ventilated area. Uh, I have the vents on back here. Liver of sulfur is very, very smelly. Sulfur smells uh, pretty disgusting, and the more concentrated it is, the worse it is. So you want it to be in a ventilated area while you are working with it. So the first thing that I will do as your instructor is I will mix up the concentrated solution, um, getting it activated. Then I will take a little bit and dilute it into water. You don't need to dip it directly into the solution. Just enough of this will activate that you are able to use. So I want to dissolve all this chunky gel, and as I do that, you'll be able to smell it. It is not pleasant, but the, the designs and the color are very cool. So I use plastic because if I use any sort of metal tweezers, um, the metal will counteract the effects of the liver of sulfur and may deactivate it or change that metal utensil. So plastic is a safe bet here. Okay, so I put the cap back on. And I'm going to take my pieces and dip them into the solution. Now, I don't ever want to touch the liver of sulfur with my bare hands. It's not going to hurt you. It's just not something that should be on your fingers. So if you do happen to get it on your hands, just wash it. Um, use any sort of plastic utensil, again, to push your metal around while it's in this solution. So depending on how long you wait... Um, the effects of your piece could go very quickly, like as you can see that small piece at the top is already changing colors. Um, or, I mean, it, it could go pretty slow depending on how new the solution is. So the fresher, the faster it will work. So I'm going to come back to this um, and let it do its job. In about five minutes, I'll come and check on it. All right, it's been five minutes, so I am checking on my solution. As you can see, the two copper pieces have turned black. Uh, and the brass piece, you'll see after I take it out of the solution, hasn't really done a lot. Um, but when I put it into the next solution, the baking soda and water, you will see the different effects. So you want to be very careful transferring the solution. The baking soda is going to stop the effects of the layer of sulfur. So I just want to put um, my metal in there for a couple minutes to let it all deactivate and calm down. But I'm trying to drip off the most of that excess liver of sulfur so I'm not contaminating um, my, my baking soda solution too much and I can still use it. I'm burying my pieces underneath the baking soda to make sure that they are fully submerged. And you can see a little bit of that color on the brass, but again, as it sits in the baking soda solution, it will uh, continue to, to change colors. So I mix it around a little bit, neutralizing the effects. And when that happens, um, you will want to rinse off your metal as well as wipe it off with a paper towel. And you can take it with your hands now because the solution is diluted. You do want to wash your hands after you've worked with either solution, um, just because any remnants of that liver of sulfur is not, not healthy for you. So the textured piece I have is an etching, and that's a different video but it has an embossed layer um, that goes a little bit deeper and it's the image of a leaf. So as you can see, I'm rubbing my metal with a paper towel and the black doesn't come off. I could, for a textured effect, take some sandpaper and sand over the top of that texture to show the copper underneath. Liver of sulfur is not a permanent solution necessarily. You can always remove it if you don't like it by sanding it and polishing it. But because this is sort of um, textured and, and deeper in certain parts, I can really let that liver of sulfur sink into those parts that go down into the metal and then let that copper shine through by sanding it. So that is one solution um, to, to using the liver of sulfur to add to your design, add to your piece. You can make it as rough and as polished as possible. That is another thing though, if you use the polishing and sanding wheels, 
all of this will come off. So you want to make sure that your metal is basically finished um, when you use the liver of sulfur. So this is the brass piece. I'm going to do the same thing. As you can see, the brass is no longer that golden color, um, but it does have like a mixture of different colors on the inside. It's not quite as dark. It's more like an antique brass color. There's some blues, there's even some yellows and a little bit of pink. So you can add it to textured metal um, or you can add it to a fully completed piece of metal. Just wanted to show you the difference between copper and brass. Lastly, this little piece I put Sharpie marker designs on the copper. And what the Sharpie does is it resists the liver of sulfur. So I can take that baking soda solution and buff it and that Sharpie will be removed and my design will come through in copper. So all the liver of sulfur has affected the areas that weren't covered up by Sharpie. So that is another design choice you can use for liver of sulfur. How might you use Sharpie to draw on your metal and keep some of that cool copper design showing through. So again, you want to rinse this, you want to dry this off, and this should be possibly the last step or one of the last steps in your metalworking process. So think about all the cool designs you can make with liver of sulfur and good luck to you.